Connecting Central Texas, this is 25 News. In 2021, the Queen City Council voting to ban local police from using no-knock warrants. That decision came after two high-profile cases that turned deadly. One of those involved Marvin Guy. In-depth reporter Nick Bradshaw takes a look at the warrants. This is video of a no-knock warrant. <laughs> Nick Bradshaw, 25 News. 34 states, including Texas, still allow no-knock warrants. According to the Brent Bowen Law Firm of North Texas, no-knock warrants are allowed where the element of surprise could aid in arresting suspects. Warrants must be approved by a police chief or other higher-up, be signed by a district court judge, and can only be used by SWAT team members in executing raids. The current Texas legislative session is now ongoing. Senate Bill 140 would ban the use of no-knock warrants. The bill was filed and received by the state and it's currently waiting to be read in front of the Senate for the first time. HB 504 would also ban no-knock warrants. In 2021, though, there were similar bills sent to the House and the Senate committee and they both died. Could teachers and school support staff statewide get a $15,000 pay raise? If passed, House Bill 1548 would do just that. The bill was filed by Williamson County State Rep James Tellerico today. According to the Texas Democratic Party, if passed, it would make Texas the seventh highest state for teacher pay. The bill would use unused state funds from our current surplus to increase the spending. The state is raising pay for workers at state hospitals and state-supported living centers. The Health and Human Services Commission says the move will help staffing, maintain a competitive wage environment, and bring more hospital beds back online. About 19,000 workers are in line to get that raise. The state is looking to fill just under 4,000 openings right now, including some at the local Waco Center for Youth and also the Mejia State Supported Living Center. Texas State Senator Roland Gutierrez introduced new proposed gun bills at the Capitol today, eight months after the mass shooting in Uvalde that killed 19 students and two teachers. In all, he announced four bills and resolutions dealing with guns through though the full details won't be released until next week. The bills relate to universal background checks, the age requirement for buying an assault style weapon, end certain protections for gun makers and law enforcement, and creating a tax on ammo and guns, which would go to a compensation fund for families of school violence victims. All right, turning now to our forecast where we saw a lot of rain today. Yeah, we did, Matt, but actually compared to some parts of the state, not that bad. Yeah, we were kind of in the middle of where we just had rain. But still cool forecast coming up. All right, Matt, a warming center is opening tonight in Killeen. The Moss Rose Center will open its doors tonight through Friday morning. That's over at 103 East Avenue e. e. This is for anyone who wants to stay the night and take advantage of their heater, but they will not be offering up beds or showers. Organizers are getting ready for the annual homeless count, also in Killeen. Volunteers from the community will be working around the clock Thursday. Their job is to keep tabs on how many people there are living without a roof over their home. This happens all over the country on Thursday. Information will be handed over to the federal government. Belton police have now identified the body found Friday in the Lampasas River near I-35. Officers say 30-year-old Eric Martinets of Taylor was found Thursday evening. At the time, police said the body had a head injury consistent with a high fall. That investigation continues. The IRS has made significant changes that could impact how much of a refund you could get back this year. 25 News reporter Christina Davis shows us what you need to know. It's tax season, and that means it's File time to ta taxes for free. Christina Davis, 25 News. New at 6 tonight, the state of Texas is announcing new one-time pandemic recovery grants. Governor Greg Abbott's office says that the grants are up to $20,000 and are for tourism, travel, and hospitality industries. Applications for the Texas Travel Industry Recovering Grants opens on the 1st. Nearly $4 million is coming to Texas A&M Central Texas. U.S. Rep. John Carter made the announcement this afternoon. The Republican congressman said the $3.9 million would go to expanding testing and evaluation lab capabilities in support of the Operational Test Command at Fort Hood.
And Bucky's just broke ground on the newest location in Central Texas this afternoon. The upcoming gas station and convenience store, one of the biggest in the state. For a size comparison, it's about 20,000 square feet bigger than the one in Temple. The project set to bring 200 new jobs to Hillsboro. We spoke with the director of real estate of Bucky's, who says the chain chose Hillsboro to add another option for people traveling between I-35, Dallas, and Waco. This is a great road, obviously people coming and going from Fort Worth, Dallas, down to Austin. Uh, highly traveled highway, uh, a lot of road trippers and that's, you know, that's our, our go-to customer is, is folks on the road and, and want a clean restroom and a good barbecue sandwich. Oh, those barbecue mm -hmm. sandwiches. As for a timeline, it will be about a year before the Hillsboro Buckies will officially open their doors. The Academy Bumblebees have a new head coach at the helm. Mark Mullins is the new coach for Academy High. According to the district, he's been an assistant coach at Stony Point, Connolly, and also Cedar Ridge. He has coached for several state semifinalist teams. Last year, the Bees lost in the first round of the playoffs and finished five and six. Former head coach Chris Lancaster left Little River to lead the Rockets in Robinson. Coming up, the White House is looking to lower insulin prices nationwide. After the break at six, we'll talk with several local providers about the price and the proposal. The cost of insulin has soared over the last couple of years, and the White House looks to make insulin more affordable through its Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah, 25 News reporter Ian Chris pressing the Biden administration on this today. All right, Ian, what'd you find out? That's right. The White, a White House representative says many a big help to Medicare seniors. In studio, Ian Chris, 25 News. All right, Ian, sounds good. Cold day out there, wet one too. Yeah, we saw the rain here across the area. Yeah, definitely oscillating good. between that front with some cool temperatures next week. As Matt mentioned, down to the south near Houston, they were hit with some high winds and tornadoes. Debris and down trees were found across the larger area. Near Pasadena, several power lines were down and roofs were ripped off of some buildings. Some of that damage caused a gas line to rupture in Baytown. The National Weather Service calling one tornado, quote, large and extremely dangerous. So far, no word on any injuries or deaths related to those storms. The Department of Homeland Security announcing a record number of border crossings at the southern border. Yeah, still to come, we're looking at the possible changes that you might see from D.C. And we're talking to a local U.S. congressman about what happened in December. Apprehensions at the border were up yet again in December, indicating the border crisis is not slowing down, at least not yet. In a recent one-on-one -on -one chat with local U.S. Congressman Pete Sessions, we discussed the border and what options the federal government truly has. In December, Border Patrol says it stopped more than 250,000 undocumented immigrants, up some 40 percent from a year earlier. Remember, that's only the ones who were actually caught. President Biden finally making his first visit to the border this month. And Title 42, which was a pandemic area of policy that deterred migrants from crossing as a health precaution, it now is remaining in place as a court battle continues. I do want to deal with the immigration issue, and we need to. It's a border security issue now because of drug cartels, because of national security. And so I don't think it's a comprehensive immigration plan that's even being talked about by anyone. It is a border crisis where we have millions and millions of people who are wandering throughout the United States. We have tens of thousands of people who are on the streets of Texas and California. Session says Republicans in the U.S. House want answers from Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas. He has insisted he will not step down. December set another record for migrant encounters at the border. Joe St. George shows us where Congress stands in passing legislation. Documents and the debt ceiling have dominated much 250,000. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Well, do you ever wonder what happens behind the scenes right here at KXXV or how it would be to actually be a reporter for a day? Well, coming up, a behind the scenes look at what our reporters do here at 25 News. Gas prices are up again. AAA says the national average is now $3.42 a gallon, up 12 cents from last week and 33 cents from last month. Experts say warmer weather around the country is inspiring people to hit the road, leading to a surge in demand. 
The statewide average is 304, 299 in McLennan County and 303 in Bell County. Working remotely saves Americans close to an hour in commuting time every day. A new paper from the National Bureau of Economic Research found working from home saved Americans about 55 minutes a day on average. Most people either spent that extra time relaxing or doing more work. The paper also found people saved additional time getting ready in the morning by working from home. Well, how do our reporters create and mold a story and present it to you every single day? Up next, we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look with that man right there, Andrew Lamparski. Plus, more classified documents found at Vice President Mike Pence's home. As a part of News Literacy Week, we're bringing you stories all week about what goes into developing the stories you see right here on air. Tonight, 25 News reporter Andrew Lamparski is giving you a look behind the curtain, showing you how he brings a story to life in just one day and making sure it's accurate, timely, and thoughtful. As a Nightside reporter, it's all about the For 25 News, I'm Andrew Lamparski. <laughs> and he does that every does. single day. <laughs> Matt? Bless them, because <laughs> that would drive me in simple and clean, just under an inch, but still, everyone's seeing rain today. All right, Matt, another set of classified documents have been found at the private home of a former member of the White House, this time former VP Mike Pence. ABC's Morgan Norwood has details. Classified documents were reportedly found at the end. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. The University of Texas looking into how robots could shape the future of our everyday lives. Straight ahead on 25 News, we have a look at the new research happening in Austin. Well, so much of our life is automated these days. The University of Texas is looking at how full-fledged robots could soon be a part of that. But there are definitely some questions about how this will all work. Maya Rodriguez tonight has more. If you came across a robot while out and about, would you walk right up 